Building a second brain in Notion is perfectly doable where you have your tasks, your projects, your notes, areas all inside of one application. And I did a live stream not too long ago going through that whole process, building it from start to finish. It's about a three hour stream. So what I thought I'd do in this video is go through the majority of those processes, much more condensed for those that don't have three hours to spare. But if you do want more information about some of the templates you can have in the databases, I would recommend go checking out that stream. So building your second brain in Notion, most people will start out with a task database. So I'm going to create a database. I'm going to call it tasks and I'm going to put SB just so that it doesn't coincide with all the other databases I have in my space because I have lots of task databases, as I'm sure you can imagine being a Notion consultant. So I'm now going to put date. So we have a date property for our tasks. I'm now going to put in a checkbox so we can say when the tasks are done or not. And that is pretty much it for that database. Now I'm going to create another database called projects. Let's keep them all capitals. And this one is going to look very, very similar. And you can combine tasks and projects into one database if you want to. But the main downside of doing that is when you have multiple data, uh, multiple projects, multiple tasks, it can get confusing as to how you define project and task, whether a video is a project or is that a task. That's personal definition with your philosophy and system. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add another done checkbox. And the difference between tasks and projects from my definition is tasks are short. They're things I want to get done very quick. They may take an hour, such as scripting a video, editing a video, recording a video. They would be tasks and the project would be the overall video. So now that we've got the projects and tasks, what I want to do is relate projects and tasks. So I'm going to title this one tasks. And because we are in the projects database, I want to relate that to tasks. So I'm going to search for tasks and see if we can find it. It's not there. Let's put SB in there. There we go. So now I found it. Now I'm going to create that relation. So you can see it's one column in this database and there it's just appeared in the other database. And what this allows me to do, and you when you're building this, is relate tasks and projects. So if you have the same sort of task you're doing, say you're scripting a video and you've actually got lots of different videos, you're going to do scripting as a task multiple times, but you may be scripting different videos, which is where the project relation would come in. So if we now add in video one, video two, or video three. I'm using videos because that is my personal use case because I'm a content creator, streamer and podcaster. So most of the work that I do, projects and tasks related, are either social media posts or video content or blog posts and things like that. If they are just normal projects in your business, that could be a sales pipeline or anything like that, the same process applies. So I'm going to rename this project very quickly. And now I can relate scripting to video one, video two, video three, or whatever it is. Then I can see when this appears on my dashboard, which we will go through later on, when this appears on my dashboard, I can see what project it is specifically related to and vice versa. In the project, I can see what tasks I need to do. So now that we've got that, I'm going to now do the habits. So a lot of people, when they're thinking about recurring tasks, they think about habits. And daily recurring tasks in Notion can't be done natively in the date property. So you need to make a new database or do it in the task database. I personally would prefer a new database for the habits. So I'm going to create another database called using table. And let's go habits. And the reason I do this in a separate database is this will allow us to automatically repopulate the habits that we need to do for the next day. So for example, today we have our date property and we're going to go, let's say we did the habits yesterday. So this is yesterday's habit tracking. We're going to put our habit in here. So I'm going to use the checkbox to say whether I've done it or not. I'm going to very bring up, let's let's put a smiley face in there because that's, that's a habit. I don't know what habit it would be, but it's a habit now. <laughs> uh, making sure you smile at least once a day, there we go. Um, so we've got our habit and we can tick it off and we can stop it. And what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to use the filter and this filter is going to mean that whenever it's a new day, it's going to refresh everything we've done because it's only going to be filtered for today. So you can see I've got date as the property is today and that's what we're filtering for. So the eighth, the one that we've just added that was yesterday, that's now disappeared, but it's still done. It's archived, it's hidden away. 
Now, when we push the plus button, it's going to add in today's date and it will be the same as tomorrow. So imagine it's the 10th now, I know I'm thinking ahead. This would disappear and then you push the plus button and 10 will reappear and they will all be unchecked. No matter how many habits you have in here, they will all be unchecked and you can create a new view for everything that you want to see. So let's call it archive and then there are all your habits. So you can tick them off and we can go back to that today's view and that's the stuff for today. That's how I would approach doing a habit tracker inside of Notion. Now we're going to go on to the areas. Now areas can be defined in lots of different ways. If you're looking at Tiago Forte's para, that sort of areas, they're much more overarching. If you're looking at August Bradley with his pillars, pipelines and vaults and the areas that he, he looks at, they're much more condensed and much more specific. And that's very, very dependent on your methodology, your philosophy when it comes to categorizing information. Personally, I consider areas as dashboards. What do I want to see? So when you're driving a car, you have your speedometer, whatever you call it, and your revs and those circles, those, those small parts of the dashboard, tell me specific pieces of information. The car is calculating all that stuff for me, but that's what I want to see. That's how I see an area. So each area would be a specific specific dashboard that I want to see. So for me, social media, each platform would be an area and social media would also be a higher up area. So I can go into small granular information, say, let's put Facebook in a couple of common social media platforms in there and then we can go social media in general. And what this means is you can now have a dashboard for Facebook, a dashboard for YouTube, dashboard for social media, whatever that happens to be, and you can see the specific information for that. So for me and content planning, I can have a content planner, projects database, content planner in Facebook. So that's just things related to Facebook. YouTube, same thing. Social media, I can then show all these social media related posts. So how do we do that? I'm going to go into tags, I'm now going to go into relations, and we're going to do the same thing we did with the projects database and tasks, but we're going to do projects and areas instead this time. So let's go projects SB. There it is, create relation. So now we have the projects relation, it's going to appear there. Areas, nice and sorted. So this is going to be a YouTube video, this is going to be a Facebook video, and this one is going to also be a YouTube video. Now the reason we've done these relations like this is so we can filter information inside the page. So I'm going to create a linked database this is another concept. So a linked database is essentially a mirror of the original database. So I'm going to copy link. So I'm copying the link to this projects database. I'm now going to actually create this as a template just to speed things up later on. And I'm going to paste that link. So a bit of orientation, I've created a link of the projects database we've made. So there's all that same information and I've put it in a template inside the areas database template page. You can see you're editing a template in areas. And I'm going to call this area template. And I'm actually going to change this to uh, a Let's, let's change this to a calendar view because that's how I would prefer to see this. You can change, change this to what you want inside the template. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that relation we've just made and I'm going to use it for filtering and this is called a self-referenced filter. So I'm now going to use the areas relation contains area template. So what this self-reference filter is now going to do is whenever we generate this template, it's going to look at the area. So when we're in Facebook, it's going to look for Facebook. And if there is a Facebook relation, then this will automatically have that filter. So you see area contains area template inside of the template. When I now go into Facebook, I can then push the area template. That's the page we've just created. It's going to load. And now I'm going to go to the filter and the filter is already Facebook. It's already looked for Facebook because it was the area template. It's looked for whatever the name is, which is up here. And we've got that filter. So now everything that is related to Facebook is now there. You can see there is that one video related to Facebook. And that's it because the this database, this project's database is filtered for Facebook information only. And the same thing applies to YouTube. So I can go area template into YouTube. And because of that self-referenced filter, we will only see video one and video three appear. 
So we can see video one and video three because that filter right here contains YouTube, nice and sorted. And you can then adjust those dashboards how you want. You can add loads of information, but this video is just bare bones basics. So that is tasks, that is projects, that is areas, and that is habits. What we have left to do now is notes and notes is the exact same thing. So you're going to create another table. We're going to call it notes. And what I prefer to do with notes, depending on how you're going to archive information, is actually relate to these two areas and then review the notes in those areas later on. So again, I'm going to make this relation. So essentially you have a, you can use the areas database as a potential tag database, maybe, or that could be one completely separate. That's another conversation. <laughs> That's another conversation. That's another story. So we're going to call this one areas, select database, areas there it is create relation and now we have our notes and the notes are in there and very quickly for the last part of this video i'm just going to customize this a little bit and show you how i personally would store all of these pieces of information so i'm going to say a database page it would help if i could spell database page and now because all of these are core databases these are the main databases these are your archive databases i would store these in a page so you don't accidentally delete them because that isn't great because you'll lose all your information so i'm just going to drag and drop these into this page and now i have them stored in this page what this means i can do is copy link to the databases and then bring them onto this page as a dashboard and I can customize them however I want, which is what I'm gonna do now. And I will probably speed this bit up. Right, so now we can customize this how we want. And this is just a couple of ideas, but because these are databases, you get a little bit more flexibility as to how things look. So what I'm actually going to do is turn this into a gallery view. So we get a nice cards looking view. I'm going to delete the default table view because I don't want that anymore. And I'm going to get rid of, so I'm going to go into properties and I'm going to card review, none. So I now have these button looking, button looking navigation posts. So these are areas and these link to those areas that we made with the projects link database for the calendar. Now the task list. I personally don't like seeing all of the all of the information in a table. You can keep it as a table, but as a suggestion, just my personal preference with aesthetics is to turn it into a list view and then show. Go into properties, show done, show project relation, and I'm going to drag the done down to the bottom. And now we have all of these things and we can filter for done is unticked. So I'm going to go into the filter, done is unticked. So now it's going to show me all the tasks that I need to do. Now that fills up a lot of space and I don't like wasting lots of space. So I'm going to create a couple of columns inside of Notion. I'm going to then drag this database into the column. And now what I can do is I can drag another database in there and I personally like to see my notes next to my tasks right at the top of the page because they're the two things I need to action the quickest essentially. Now I'm going to leave this as a table view. This could be changed as a list view, whatever, and you can filter it for whatever you need for the notes. And this is the database I would use the web clipper for. If you don't know, Notion has a web clipper and I did go over some of the add-ons which give you more flexibility with a web clipper in the video up here, wherever it is. Ugh can't remember wrong side whatever now habits again are action focused so i would put them towards the top and we need to add in this relation and we need to add in this filter again because this is a linked database so date is today and that will only be one row that will only ever be one row now i don't want to see the date because i know it's always going to be today so i'm going to hide that property and there's our habits and those habits will go all the way along to the side of the page and we have our notes we have our tasks we have our areas and we have our projects and what i personally would do is have a calendar so you can see everything going on so 
you can you can see what's going on or that could be a timeline view depending on your preference of viewing your projects and what you're doing what you're up to and you can drag them around move them around and change whatever you want to see so hopefully that helped you out for those that don't want to watch a three hour long live stream that is essentially what i've built but in the live stream i go much more in depth on how to build the templates i go more into depth with the self-referenced filters and i do create a spaced repetition flashcards database as well so if you want any of that information go check out that live stream and i'll see you in the next video.